Tonight is a large-scale shell shock attack on the way, when the first Retina Display IMAX might launch, and how protesters in Hong Kong are using the FireChat app to get the word out. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 182 for Monday, September 29th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For a free two-week trial and 10% off, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code TECHNIGHT. Hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into today's tech feed. Last week, we spoke with Security Now host Steve Gibson about the new shell shock bug. Well, it's not really new. It's actually over 20 years old. A serious vulnerability that research firm FireEye now says is being exploited via malware droppers, reverse shells, and backdoors, data exfiltration, and good old-fashioned DDoS attacks. In other words, it's pretty pervasive and pretty bad. FireEye notes that the initial patch for this vulnerability, which was released in sync with the vulnerability's public disclosure, is inadequate. ZDNet writes that a vigorously updated intrusion prevention system, or IPS, deployed not just at the perimeter, but also at critical points within the network, may be the only effective systemic protection against shell shock for now. OS 10 Mavericks users got an update to address the shell shock bug to address those who had manually configured their computers in a way that left them exposed. Although Apple stresses last week that very few Macs were actually impacted by the bug and most users were protected by default. For users running older OS 10 versions, there are separate downloads for Lion and Mountain Lion, but no patch yet for machines running the public or developer builds of OS 10 Yosemite. Speaking of Yosemite, 9to5Mac cites anonymous sources that say a new line of IMAX with ultra-high resolution retina displays may be in late testing stages within Apple. The machine will reportedly have a thin profile similar to the current design that was introduced back in 2012, but with faster processors and improved Wi-Fi antennas. Apple launched the Retina display way back in 2010 on the iPhone 4, but the Retina iMac would be the company's first Retina desktop computer. As for resolution, OS 10 Yosemite betas include references to 6400 by 3600, 5760 by 3240, 4096 by 2304 resolution screens. So it looks like there's some testing going on and Apple has been rumored to be working on a 5K iMac display for launch later this year. Sources also tell 9to5Mac that Apple is preparing updates to iMovie and Final Cut Pro with improved tools for editing high res and 4K footage. Facebook is rolling out a new ad network. This one's a little different, though. It's called Atlas. It lets advertisers buy ads via Facebook on properties that Facebook doesn't actually own. The company says that Atlas can help marketers track the effectiveness of their ads around the web. And it'll be more effective than other big ad platforms because it's using Facebook's own data. Ad holding company Omnicom, which already has deals with Facebook and Google and Twitter, says that it will buy ads with Atlas. And Facebook-owned Instagram will also work with the platform. Facebook says user identity will remain anonymous to advertisers and publishers beyond basic facts about a person. The company also says it's targeting Google's double-click display ad business, which is big business. In fact, this year, Google may generate $4 billion in display ads in the U.S. alone and generate $54 billion in net revenue overall. More rumors are surfacing ahead of Microsoft's San Francisco event tomorrow, widely believed to be the launch of Windows 9. Namely, the next version of Windows could be free for those who are still using XP or Vista or Windows 7. A recent Microsoft job posting said that the company was looking for somebody who could help, quote, fundamentally, fundamentally rather, change the way Windows is shipping to put the ecosystem at the center of Windows. That could be maybe a revamp of Windows Update. Windows 9 will also allegedly support displays at with resolutions that are high as 8K, and old Windows apps will reportedly scale up to look better on those high-resolution displays. No matter what is announced, we here at Twit will have a special episode of Windows Weekly airing tomorrow to cover all of the Microsoft fun. And all those fancy displays, 8K, might be coming to Fifth Avenue in New York City. Microsoft has confirmed it will continue to expand its retail presence and take more control over consumer shopping experience with an addition of a Microsoft store on Fifth Avenue. It's a big 
big shopping street. It's five years in the making, say Microsoft executives. The store is expected to open sometime next year. And over the past few years, the company has been broadening its retail reach to directly connect with its customers. Sounds like another company I know, but we won't talk about right now. The company plans to open 10 more Microsoft stores in the U.S. and Canada in time for the holiday season, but this will be the first full-line Microsoft retail store in Manhattan itself. The company has some specialty stores, which are smaller, at the shops at Columbus Circle, also in Manhattan, and the Staten Island Mall. I have never been there. Coming up, why the sale of smuggled iPhone 6s are dropping fast in China. And up next, I'll talk with Celina Larson from Read Write about how one messaging app is powering protests in Hong Kong. But first, we want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this episode of Tech News Tonight. It's an all-in-one platform that makes it easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. In fact, if you haven't been to Squarespace lately, it's pretty cool. The company has new features, new designs, and even better support than ever. You get started with 25 beautiful templates. There's also a logo creator tool that helps individuals and small businesses with limited resources create a nice, simple identity for themselves. If you want help, Squarespace has live chat and email support 24 hours a day, seven days a week. A few years ago, I ran into quite a few problems on my own Squarespace site, and I always had somebody getting right back to me. It was great. Great. Plus, there's a redesigned customer help site for easier access to self-help articles if you're the kind of person who just wants to deal with it on your own. Video workshops, workshops rather. What's a workshop? It's inexpensive. Plans start at just $8 a month and include a free domain name if you sign up for a year and it's mobile ready. The new Squarespace metric app for iPhone and iPad allows you to check site stats, page views, how many unique visitors you've had, social media follows. And there's a blog app too. You can make text updates, tap and drag images to change your layouts all on the go. Squarespace has beautiful code and takes care of all the hosting so you don't have to. And you can start a free two-week trial right now. Don't need a credit card. Just start building your website. When you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use the offer code TECHNIGHT. And you'll get 10% off. And you also show your support for our little show. Thanks to Squarespace for their support of Tech News Tonight. A better web awaits and it starts with your new Squarespace website. Joining us now is Selena Larson, staff writer at Read Write. Welcome back to the show, Selena. Thank you so much for having me, Sarah. Well, thanks for being here. So let's talk about this app. It's called Fire Chat, and it's really uh, kind of taking credit for uh, giving protesters in Hong Kong an uh, interesting way to communicate. So explain to us what's going on. Yeah, so um, the root of these pro-democracy protests actually goes back almost 20 years ago when the United Kingdom handed over Hong Kong to the Chinese government. At the time, the Chinese promised that Hong Kong citizens could democratically elect their uh, leader for the first time ever in 2017. Uh, but now uh, the Chinese government may renege on that promise, um, and there are some proposed vo voting reforms that, that may look like that might not happen. Uh, so there's actually a protest right now happening in Hong Kong led by a group called Occupy Central. And many of those protesters are students, young people, um, educators. And uh, one of the students leading the protest actually suggested protesters use fire chat to communicate because it's a way to uh, message each other on, uh, on, on your mobile devices without being connected to data or cellular networks. Okay, so how does that work? How, does it, how do the messages move from one user to another? Yeah, so it's actually called mesh networking. And if you think about it, um, if you think about what mesh looks like, uh, each of the devices are a node in the mesh, right where it kind of where it connects. Uh, and it uses uh, Apple's multi-peer connectivity network and Bluetooth to be able to have each device um, be a node or a link in this chain and uh, connect with other devices. And so the range of a device that's enabled with fire chat is up to 200 feet. So if you think in highly densely populated areas, um, people with um, fire chat could actually create their own um, small little networks that don't require internet um, or cellular, ne cellular networks. So potentially, um, if the Chinese government decided to turn off the internet, which they, they have not done that, um, but uh, for instance, Instagram is blocked in mainland China. So potentially if, um, something happened and uh, internet was internet connectivity was cut off in Hong Kong or really anywhere uh, in the world, anyone with fire chat could set up these uh, individual like mobile nodes to create a network of connectivity. So uh, if you're trying to basically stop communication on a large scale such as this and you can't 
shut off the internet and cripple the way that people are communicating with each other, what mm. would some, you know, the Chinese government or another entity have option-wise when it comes to the way uh, FireChat works? So there's really nothing that people can do to stop fire chat and people from people creating their own networks without access to the physical device. Uh, when you sign up for fire chat, you do need access to a data network because it requires you to obviously download the app from the app store. Uh, it's available on iOS and Android. So um, either one of those uh, devices you can use. Uh, so you do have to have internet at least at some point. Um, but as soon as you sign up, you get your username, which FireChat actually uh, suggests to use a name that's pseudonymous and so you don't use your own name. And um, and while it's not entirely, I mean, it's, it, it's technically anonymous, but it's not really private. I mean, anyone on the FireChat network can see these messages. So people can set up their own um, FireChat chat rooms, uh, which they call FireChats. Uh, but um, but really anyone anyone that's on the FireChat network can see these different um these different messages and chats and stuff. So, um, so, but once you're in the actual network, you uh, somebody would have to have access to your device to disable it because it uses it physically uses the Bluetooth, it physically uses the peer-to-peer -peer, um, connectivity to be able to uh, create these networks and chat with each other. Yeah, you know, when you look at the uh, the app just in, in in the app store and some of the screenshots that they're using to to convey what this app is being used for, certainly doesn't look like a protester tool. It's sort of like. <laughs> is fun you know it's kind of you know, the happy-go-lucky type of a thing oh, do, you, absolutely. do you think do you think that the the people who made fire chat had any idea that it would be used this way was this the point oh no actually not at all i talked to them earlier today and uh, when they created it, it was uh as a way to have people communicate in these densely populated areas for instance um burning man uh that's one of the big art and music festival that happens in the desert every and notoriously year. bad for internet access yes when my I friends are the most quiet actually <laughs> Yeah, nobody, yeah, no one, it's kind of, I mean, I think it's sort of meant to be like that, a way to like decompress, but, <laughs> uh, but I mean, for Coachella or any of these other things, uh, they can use fire chat, but also I was talking to uh, one of the founders today and he said that um, in Hawaii, actually, people are really interested in using fire chat because if a hurricane comes and knocks out power next, knocks out cell towers, um, if they already have fire chat installed, then they can automatically boot up their app. They can start talking with different members of the community and it can really help with disaster relief. Um, so it's, so it's not exclusively, of course, it wasn't made as a protest tool, but it obviously is effective anywhere they have, uh, highly densely populated areas and, um, a lot of people with mobile devices. So Elena Larson is a staff writer over at Read Write and a frequent guest here on Tech News Tonight. Thanks for being back with us, Selena, and remind folks where they can keep up with your work. Yeah, definitely. Thanks again for having me. Uh, you can obviously check me out on readwrite.com and uh, send me a hello tweet at Selena Larson. You heard it here. Send her a hello, everybody. Thanks, <laughs> Selena. Yeah, thank you so much. All right, finally, when Apple's latest iPhones went on sale this month in Hong Kong, there was sort of a gray market that emerged. Chinese scalpers were looking to make a premium by reselling the phones. But the demand may already be petering out if you're looking at prices. Wholesalers who helped orchestrate the smuggling of thousands of these phones into China are now dropping prices to move inventory. For example, in Beijing, one retailer was recently selling the lower-end iPhone 6 and 6 Plus for about the equivalent of just over $1,000, going up to $1,400. That's down from about $2,000 to $2,400. That was right after the new iPhone release. Now, China, of course, is a fast-growing market for Apple, competes with Samsung for control of that high-end smartphone segment. Back in January, Apple had a long-delayed deal, finally, with the country's largest telecom company, which is China Mobile. That helped bolster sales. The largest smartphone market in the world, which which is China, accounted for 15.9% of all of Apple's revenue in the last quarter. So you have to imagine that the company is really hoping that demand for iPhones increases again. And on that note, that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Real case of the Mondays for me today. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us with questions, comments, or feedback at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss Tech News Today. That is tomorrow morning and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. I'll see you tomorrow, and thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.